Hey, hey, this is Teresa Matsura, and you're listening to Uncanny Japan. Imagine it's after dark. You've been up since dawn. All by yourself, all day long. You harvested your sweet potato fields before the weather turned bad. Then you dragged the heavy potato filled boxes into your kura, your earthen storehouse. You secured the door and hurried over to the public bathhouse. It's late now, so no one's here. But the room's still warm and steamy and smells like cypress with a hint of mildew. After scrubbing the dirt and sweat from your skin, you step into the deep bath, soaking all the way up to your neck. The exhausted, cramping muscles in your shoulders, back, and legs start to release, and it feels so good. Outside, the wind howls. The rain lashes. The Andon lantern you hung on a hook at the entrance, the only light in this damp, dark room, flickers. It's okay, though. You feel safe inside this slightly cavernous room. You'll wait until the storm passes before you leave. You close your eyes. But you only have a moment's rest before you realize you're not alone. Someone or something is in there with you. You can feel it. Oi! You call out. Anyone there? There's no answer. But you hear it in the far corner, in one of the denser shadows. Breathing. Movement. And the sound of... Licking. Show yourself, you demand, but it continues. Now you know something is not right. You scramble out of the bath and hurry to grab your paper lantern. Holding it out in front of you, you take one slow step after another, creeping across the wet floor toward where the sound is coming from. A little farther... A little farther. The candlelight illuminating a little more until the sound stops. You stop too. Detikoi! Come out! And it does. Crouching down on all fours, it steps into the quivering light. A ghastly creature the size of a child, but sinewy with bluish-black skin and tangled black hair falling to its thin shoulders. On its feet and hands protrude hooked claws. It looks up at you with unblinking yellow eyes. What are you doing here? What do you want? You ask. As if in answer, the beast opens its wide mouth and out falls a disturbingly long, wormy tongue. Keeping eye contact, it leans down and begins licking the slimy residue from the wooden plank floor. You nod, whisper to yourself, Nope, and quietly back away. Today we're going to talk about a yokai I've always been quite fond of. A little fella called the Akaname, or the Scum Licker. Would you like to explore the stranger, more obscure corners of Japanese culture? Dig a little deeper into superstitions, curious customs, and all those mysterious creatures that inhabit the land? If so, then this is the podcast for you. Uncanny Japan is where I, author Teresa Matsura, share all the fascinating tidbits I unearth while doing research for my writing. 
from the bizarre to the ghastly, and everything in between. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey, hey, I hope you're doing well. So today let's talk about the Akaname, sometimes called the scum liquor or the filth liquor. Well, don't puke, but Aka can also mean dead skin. Like all that crud that doesn't go down the drain, mixed with soap residue, builds up on the tile or your porcelain. You can also buy something in Japan called Akatori, a thing that takes off Aka. And what you'll get if you buy an Akatori is an exfoliating sponge or some gritty soap. And it's that gross, slimy scum that the Akaname, Nameru means to lick, feeds off of. I was surprised to learn there isn't a whole lot out there about this endearing, creepy creature. One depiction that is often referenced is from Toriyama Sekien's book, Gazu Hyaki Yagyo, or you might know it better as The Illustrated Night Parade of a Hundred Demons. This was Mr. Sekien's first book out of four such works. And although he didn't write anything much about this peculiar beastie, he did illustrate one in black and white creeping around a bathhouse. So anyway, that came out in 1776. But if you look back before the Akaname, in the year 1686, you'll find something called an Akaneburi. This yokai was painted by Yamaoka Genin in his book, Kokkon Hyakumonogatari Hyoban. And what he says is, just like fish are born in water and drink water, and louses come from filth and they eat filth, the Akaneburi is a creature that originates from the accumulation of scum and dirt and thus eats it to live. So how can you spot an Akaname? I mean, beside the fact that it's crouching down in your bathtub licking the scum ring. Well, they're said to be the size of a child, or sometimes even a baby, with blue-black skin, although some images have them pale in color. And then others make a pun off the word Aka, which isn't just scum, but also means red. So they're shown with ruddy skin. No matter their color, though, They've got clawed hands and feet, big goggling eyes, sometimes wild, funky hair, and most importantly, a very long tongue. So even though the thought of going to sleep only to wake up to have your ofuroba licked spotless is quite appealing, running into one of these creatures was so unsettling that people preferred to make sure they kept their bath super clean so as not to have one show up in the first place. A 21st century take on the Akaname can be found in that Onikara Denwa app I talked about back in 2019, episode 37. Remember that? A rather traumatic app that mothers can use to get their children to do something, or really anything. Like, if you don't listen to your mom, I'm going to call an Oni. Then the mom uses the app. Pretend phone rings. She hands it to her kid. Scary voice of an Oni threatens the child if he doesn't do what his mom says, he's going to be over there right now. I guess it's still a thing. But on it, I saw that they do have an Akaname. And one of his threats is that if you don't take a bath, he'll march right over to your house and lick the dirt off you. The little illustration is super creepy too. Glowing yellow eyes, giant purple tongue. So yeah, there's one way to get your child to take a bath. But that's about all I could find about the Akaname or the Akaneburi. That's basically what he is and what he does. Except there is one more variety, a little more colorful. It was written about in the Nikto Honzo Zusan. And here is written about an Akaneburi who appears as a beautiful woman who shows up at an onsen and offers to scrub your back. Only instead... She uses that fearsome tongue to lick off all your skin and your flesh, leaving only a pile of bones behind. The end. For you and for this episode. Before I go, though, might I suggest an experiment? 
Instead of faithfully cleaning your bathtub after every use, why not let it go a little? Let it collect some mold and some soap scum, get a bit gross, and see if you can attract one of these dedicated and hard-working pals. Maybe you can train it to do the floors and the toilets, too. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, super awesome patrons. You're the best. And I will talk to you all again in two weeks. Bye-bye. You've reached the end of the show, and I just want you to know how much we appreciate you listening and supporting us. Any subscribing, reviewing, and gushing to your friends, family, even random strangers, really does help keep us going. If you have the means and you want to help a little more and get a little more, we are making extra content over on Patreon, all for only $5 a month. Or, if you like to read horror, you might be interested in my Bram Stoker-nominated short story collection, The Carp-Faced Boy and Other Tales. Hontoni arigato gozaimasu. Thank you again, and I'll talk to you real soon. もしもし僕は赤なめ僕はね汚いものが大好きお掃除してないお風呂やゴミだらけのお部屋で<笑> <僕はね、汚いものが大好き。笑> 赤やゴミを食べて暮らしているんだよ。あれ、君、お風呂に入らないなら、僕が舐めてきれいにしてあげるよ。今から行くからね。<笑>